just New Zealand, eh? Not much to look at, is it? I think all places look pretty much alike at first. It's quite a thrill to think we're here at last. I wonder what it'll be like, Harry. At least you'll be there. That's not why you came. Isn't it? No, because you didn't know I existed until you got on this ship. I soon found out. It'll be better than working in that factory in London. Was it so very bad? Sounds to me pretty much like any other factory. Oh, no. The jobs guy, it was all right. But I got sick of the everlasting crowd. I never seemed to be alone. It was the same as in the army. Always with a crowd of other blokes. Everybody knew where you were going, almost what you were thinking. We were always falling over each other. I wanted a bit of room. I've been looking around to see how I could get out of it. I'd read about various schemes, but New Zealand seemed a good long way off. Well, it's not far off now. No, not far. Harry, you can't always run away from yourself, you know. Do you think you will like it here? Well, out on this hydro construction job, I will at least get away from the city. Yes, but have you thought what a hydro construction camp will be like? Oh, I don't know. Out in the open, like the stories. Roaring mountain torrents, <laughs> vast forests, tents under the tall trees. Well, why not? Should be a bit different from Bermondsey. I hope it's not too different. Getting homesick? A little. I was pretty miserable when I left. I should have thought five years in America would have cured you of that. Why did you come then? When I was evacuated to America, I was a child. And when I came home, I'd grown up. I couldn't settle either. So one day, I went into a Ministry of Labour office to ask about emigrating. I wanted to know about going to New Zealand. The girls seemed a bit surprised when I asked for symbol clips. I've met a few New Zealanders. I like them. Any particular one? No, no particular one. And then? And then things moved pretty fast. Before I knew where I was, I'd been chosen to go. I was terribly excited until a few days before sailing. And then I felt awful to think I was leaving home again after being away in America so long. New Zealand seemed such an outlandish place to be going to. What's the matter? Don't you think you'll like it here? Oh, yes, yes, I'll like it all right. I believe parts of New Zealand are like Scotland. Is that where you came? Well, I wanted to travel. They say the Scotch are like that. I've been to London. Didn't think much of that. So I thought I'd come here, see if I liked it. It only cost me ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Will all government-assisted immigrants assemble in the lounge on E-deck when the ship berths? They will be met by New Zealand immigration officials. Now, you needn't worry about your final destination or about your accommodation. Everything has been arranged for you. Each of you will receive an envelope containing your rail or bus reservations and details of your accommodation so that you will know what part of the country you are going to. When you get there, there will be a very friendly welcome awaiting you and I hope that you will settle down and like this country. Name? Cassie McLeod. Cassie McLeod. Cassie. Oh, here we are. Margaret Allen. Margaret, right on top. Margaret Allen. Sure. Harry White. Harry White. Oh. Excuse me. Nurses' Home, Public Hospital, Christchurch. The Johnny Woolen Mills. That seems to be here in Wellington. Public Works Hydro Construction Camp, Lake Pukaki. Sounds as if you really are going to the well, Harry. How far apart are Christchurch and Wellington? Well, Christchurch is in the South Island and Wellington's in the North Island. There's a ferry service overnight. Smashing a geography, eh? It'll be a long way apart, Kathy. Well, uh, we might be able to arrange to put you together if you want to, but uh, these jobs have been chosen from the best available. If you shifted, it mightn't be so good. We'll go where it's safe. We mightn't see each other for a while, Kathy. That's what I was thinking. Yes, when we leave the boat, it will be just like leaving England. We'll write, though. I will write, but it's near the nurse's home, the place you're going to. You hide, just like a pencil. Nurses' home. Public hospital, Christchurch. Boys 
Robin. And my girlfriend, Cassie, a Scott girl I came out in the boat with. Thanks, Joan. I think it's a good idea to go to the hotel at Mount Cook for the Labor Day weekend. Tell me it's a posh winter sports place. I'm having a good time here and the hostel is very comfortable and we're well looked after. My bedroom is bright and sunny and looks over the Wellington Harbour. This is an immigration hostel and we're all girls who have come out under the scheme. After spending a while here, many girls find private board and go off on their own. But it gives us a start with the others who have come out here from home. I've also met a lot of New Zealand girls who play in basketball. We play on Saturday mornings and afternoons as a rule, and it's a very popular game here. Sometimes, I'm not so good. I also go tramping, and the other weekend, I went for a 40-mile tramp with some other girls. We have a five-day week, which gives us a long weekend, and some of them go tramping almost every week. But I wouldn't do that. It makes your legs too muscly. It was very nice. But I wasn't sorry at the end of the first day when we stopped in a clearing to settle down for the night. We'd a lovely big fire and it was most enjoyable cooking our supper around it. We talked until quite late before getting into our sleeping bags. The fire had burned low and it was very still and dark. I thought I heard something. As I told the girls at work, I was real fierce. They are very friendly and nice, and I like them. All except one girl who's always tripping about us coming here and taking jobs from New Zealanders. One day, I really let her have it. What do you think I'm coming here for, to work? And besides, I'm not taking a job from you, am I? Your mother and father was a me before I was. Get on with your job and leave me to me. She hasn't bothered me since. I think the others were rather amused, because she wasn't very popular. The other night, I was on the radio. It wasn't so good. The announcer fella couldn't understand me. Another young lady, number three on the Woolen Mills team. And what is your name, miss? Cassie McLeod. Uh, Cassie McLeod. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Cassie, this is your first question. Uh, I want you to tell me, what is Musca Domestica? Musca Domestica. A flea. A flea. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very sorry, no, that's not the right answer. Actually, Musca Domestica is the scientific name for the common household fly. That's right. Now, but you said flea. Okay. Well, how do you spell it? F-L-Y. F-L-Y, that's flea. Well, how, how do you pronounce F-L-E-A? Flea. A flea. A flea. A flea. Oh, a flea. <laughs> well, and our M-O-U-S-E is moose, too, I suppose, is it? Right. Well, I think I'd better give you five <laughs> shillings and uh, take the next competitor. I find things a wee bit quiet in the evenings. After the pictures, the only thing is to go to a milk bar. I've been going out sometimes with a chap from the factory. He thinks I'm no bad. He wants me to go to the Gaiety Dance Club with him on a Saturday night, but I'm not so sure. Altogether, I'm pretty happy here. I hope you like your work. I like my work very much. It's all interesting, but I like it best when I'm on duty in the children's ward. There are quite a lot of us starting our training, and we spend a good deal of time in lectures. There's such a variety of things to learn, from physiology to how to make a bed, and it's not all pleasant. The other day, I was ticked off for not making a bed properly. The sister is a bit of a bite, and didn't seem to mind that it was in front of a patient. Another sister came up and showed me what I'd done wrong. She's always helpful and nice, and we all like her. There's a lot of variety in the training, as the hospitals are not as specialized as they are at home, and nurses complete their general training in one hospital. A hospital is a strange place at night, very still and quiet, and yet sometimes a good deal can happen.
after working all night, it's odd to be going to bed in daylight, but I'm so tired, it's just the best place on earth. This is certainly no job for a person who doesn't like work. London seems a long way off now, but I find it hard to get used to the provincial atmosphere here. Christchurch is supposed to be the most English city in New Zealand, and I suppose it is in a way, with the square and the cathedral. The shops are good. When we are off duty, we often have a shopping expedition. My two particular friends are Kath and Joan, the two who say they are going to England when they finish their training. It's good to see so much off the ration. Butter seems to be the only thing rationed here. We sometimes buy things for supper in our room. We don't need it, but it's wonderful being able to go shopping without queuing or giving up points. I gave a party on my birthday and had my friends to supper. We are not supposed to have food in our room. Maybe that's why we do it, like at school. Sometimes we go riding in the park, usually in the morning, when we are on afternoon duty. We hire horses by the hour, and I find this good exercise and a change from the hospital. Last Saturday, we went to the races. New Zealanders certainly are keen on horse racing. I was amazed that such a crowd could collect in a place of this size. Just my luck. Afterwards, two of us went home with another nurse whose parents have a farm out of town. me to be a pretty good life, but I don't think that it's as easy as it looks, or that all farms are as pretty as this one. But it made a nice weekend for us. I'm writing this under the trees near the nurse's home. Yesterday I had a letter from Harry. He doesn't seem to be enjoying his work very much. I hope that you and Cassie do manage a weekend at the hotel at Mount Cook. It's 35 miles from here, but I will manage to see you somehow. I'm certainly fed up with this place. When I first saw it from the bus, I didn't like the look of it. Although on the way, the view was impressive. Mountains in the distance and a big lake, but it's very bare, tussock-covered country with hardly a tree and lots of dust. As we came around the corner, we saw the dam. They've carved a great gash out of the countryside. The dust was worse than ever. It was a bit of a shock to think that this was my destination and that I had agreed to work here for two years. When I said it would be a bit different from Bermondsey, I certainly wasn't kidding myself. When I got out of the bus in front of the YMCA, I wondered if I had landed up in an army camp. There were rows and rows of huts, all exactly alike. I couldn't believe that I had come halfway around the world for this. A little man came up and asked me if I was a new mechanic and told me he would show me to my hut. We seemed to walk past hundreds of those huts, all the same in endless rows. I thought of your camp under the tall trees and vast forests and couldn't imagine anything more different. At last we came to my hut. I hoped it might be a bit more inviting inside, but I was disappointed. It had a rough table and stool and a bed with no mattress or blankets. When I went outside, the little man had gone and I went to look for some bedding. It was a Saturday afternoon. I found a group of men listening to a horse race on the radio. 
Looks like you've done your sugar that time, Mac. Yes, I'll have to put the lights on for him to get home. It is a favourite pastime up here, and they weren't very cooperative when I butted in. You the new digger? Yes, I didn't know I was expected. The foreman said you were coming up on the best today. Well, I've been shown a hut, there's no blankets or mattress in it. Make it easy, Dig, lots of time. Why don't we get the place into this race? I've got some dough on it. There it is, the New Zealand 1948 and one for the champion Highland Fling. The whole works are a big project. They are building an earth dam to raise the level of the lake about 30 feet. It's all a part of the electrification schemes that cover New Zealand. Most of the work is done by heavy machinery, which is operated 24 hours a day. This means a good deal of servicing, and as a diesel mechanic, I have plenty to do and in pretty rugged conditions. It certainly isn't like that factory in England, and I must admit that there is plenty of space, and we are not falling over each other, so I'm not having that trouble here. But I can't say I find the men much better to work with. To my way of thinking, they are pretty casual, and think nothing of having an argument with the boss, they have an odd sense of humour at times, too. What's the trouble, Happy? Thinks I can't take a bulldozer down there. But doesn't he know his job, then? No one better. Can't let him think he's right all the time. Look out! <laughs> Well, it's not my idea of a joke. It's very funny from where I was. Uh, maybe, maybe. Well, I'm near to get you at the bulldozer today. You put the wind up half the new blokes in champ. It's not my idea of a joke. Well, you'll get used to that, mate. I felt like giving him a poke on the jaw. I suppose some of them are not so bad. The foreman came along tonight as I was writing this. How are you getting on? Settling down any better yet? Not much. How about the work? Oh, it's a bit strange for me. I'm used to a factory, and working on these tractors out in the open isn't the best. We have to improvise a bit out here in the back country. Oh, it's not only that. I specialised in engines, but here I seem to be expected to do anything. From dismantling a gearbox to fixing a fuel injection pump. Yes, you have to be an all-rounder here. Did you have a bit of trouble today? What's that? Didn't Bob give you the run-around with the dozer? Oh, forget it. He's a good driver, but that's a dangerous caper. We'll have to cut that out in future. Is your girlfriend coming up to the Hermitage? How do you know? I heard you inquiring about transport to the Hermitage. Yes, it's difficult to get up there, except on certain days. When's she coming? Labor Day weekend. I've got an old truck of my own. I want to get some stuff down from a sheep station. Dusky Top House on the Hermitage Road. Yes, I know. You can collect it and go on from there to the Hermitage if you like. Okay. It's 36 miles from here. Can you drive? Four years in the army. Good old. Remember, when she's cold, start her with the throttle closed. Okay, cheerio. Mr. Evans, the late Bukaki Hydro, said you had some stuff for me to collect for him here. Yeah, that's right. Just wait till I've drafted this lot, will you? You from England? Yes. I suppose you picked my voice. I'm a homie myself. Been here nearly 30 years. Well, you must like it, or you wouldn't have stayed. Oh, I've done all right. Don't you like it here? Not much. It's not like I imagined it would be. Of course, it's different for you. You've got your own farm. Oh, yes, but I didn't have it when I started. Things were tougher in those days. Still, the opportunities are here. 
You in a hurry? Well, I'm on my way to the Hermitage. All right, oh. Hello, Harry. Hello, Margaret. Are you enjoying yourself here? Oh, it's lovely. We feel like tourists. How did the van go? Oh, not bad. Slowly but surely. I can imagine. Well, it's 18 years old. It was nice of the foreman to lend it to you. Who are the boys? Well, they asked for a lift from the camp. Some of them are going climbing. Blessed to come up for the weekend. What do you want to do now? Well, I thought if we'd got the skiing grounds, it might be fun. But there's several miles from here. Is there a road? They call it a road, a goat track. Well, we can go up in the van, then. Let's get going right away. I thought this weekend was never going to come. It's an awful long time since we saw each other. <clears throat> come on, Tommy. Give us an up the end of the girls. Oh, well, cheerio. See you on Tuesday. You hope. She'll be all right. Where are they going? Climbing a mountain. Dangerous sort of a caper, but they like it. This'll do me, boy. Come on, let's get up to the skiing ground. I didn't bring them. They bought themselves. They seem nice enough. They're such a rowdy lot. Doesn't suit me. But they're friendly. I suppose so. They still get under my skin. Well, Cassie will enjoy the company anyway. Cheer up, Harry. No use letting it spoil the day for us. Seems sweet on her. Could be. Not a bad bloke, old Tony. Bit standoffish, though. He'll settle down. Don't think he likes camp much. I saw a bit of England during the war. You always find a pub. It'll come handy anywhere in the old country. I'm sort of shocked that he's probably suddenly stuck away out here in the blue eye. He'll settle down if he doesn't toss in first. Joke is all right after being out here for a while, but something don't wait to find out. Why do you like it here? Good life for the blacks, and all this isn't too bad. Hey, bye. Mr. Dames a bit, though. I just thought you'd been too shy for the girl. Should have seen him last time we went to dance fairly. You weren't doing too bad. I certainly am. Hey, look at Cassie. She isn't doing too well. <laughs> <laughs> In some ways, she seems to be doing very well. <laughs> oh, it's nice to see you cheerful again, Harry. Well, it's pretty good being with you. Is it? Mm. I like it, too. But I wish you were happier about your job. Oh, perhaps it's not what I expected it to be. I knew it mightn't be. Maybe you expected too much. Maybe. I'm leaving, anyhow. But didn't you promise to stay for two years when they gave you your passage out? Yes, but I didn't know it was going to be like this. I'm not going to stay. I'm sorry. I thought you might get to like it here. Sometimes it takes a little time to settle in. It isn't always easy. Why don't you try a bit longer? What's it mean to you? It means a lot to me, Harry. It means a lot to me that you do what you set out to do. Don't you think it's God's own country, though? I bet you've got devil's end bends in it. Come on, we'd better be getting back. Well, go on, we're not stopping you. I can't tear myself away. Come on. See, I said he was a beaut with a dame. I wonder if you'll be up again sometime. Does that mean you're staying? I think you should, Harry. Come on, Polly. You could go on saying goodbye all night. Wouldn't be too bad either. Goodbye, Margaret. I'll look for you on the bus in the morning.
Goodbye, Harry. You're set on leaving, I'll ring district office about it. Maybe they'll be able to find something you like better. I thought you were settling down. Somehow I don't seem to fit in here, Mr. Evans. There's a bit too much of this pommy business. <laughs> they wouldn't do that if they didn't like you. It's just their way. They're quite good chaps, really. Hello? Hello, Hermitage. What? When did it happen? Yes, I know, at the top of the glacier. I'll send a party up right away. Have as much gear ready as you can. I'll call you back later. All right. More trouble. You know Johnson? He went up with you on Saturday? Yes. That was his copper ringing from the hermit. Johnson's bust his leg at the head of the glacier. Now give me the garage smartly. We'll have to organize a party to bring him down in the morning. A garage? Foreman here. Get two of the big trucks ready with seats right away. Now one of our men hurt climbing. We're sending a party now, ready to go up the glacier before daybreak to bring him down. Oh, it'll be all right if the weather holds out. Can I come? Too tough. You're not used to mountains. There's no picnic getting a stretcher down. What do you want to go for? You're leaving anyway. Get me the mess hut. I'd still like to come. What use do you think you'd be? I was a stretcher bearer for four years. Old to be of some use. A mess hut? There's Browning there. No, Browning. All right, you come. Go get some warm clothes on. Be back here in ten minutes. Is that you, Bill? Look, there's been an accident. Johnson bust his leg up at the glacier. I'm sending a party up right away. Yes, I'm going too.
any solid going. Struce, is there much more of this? A bit yet. Can you take it? I can take it. It's the only way up. There'll be worse than that yet. Look, would you like to go down? Some people don't like climbing. You can follow the trail back. What do you take me for? They'll be just beyond that. Do you think they'll be all right? You'll soon know. Come on. Well, there they are. Looks as if it's all right. You better go down and see if you can help. You've got to be got ready for the trip back. That'll be laying you down on the end of a rope. Okay. Good job there were three of them. Yes, one of them stayed with him. Wonder how he is. Oh, we'll know as soon as Harry gets down to him. We'll get a parachute and chuck him over the edge. He'll float down like a ruddy fairy. I'm no fairy boy. I don't like heights. Are you feeling all right? Yes, I'm okay. Not doing bad, is he? Where'd you learn this, Harry? I was a stretcher bearer. Were you? What unit? Paratroopers. Paratroopers, eh? You don't like that caper much. Where were you? Oh, I'd spots in Normandy. 
Who were you in? The Fourth Armored Brigade. Oh, wouldn't have liked that caper much. All right, set now. Let's get him out of here. How do you feel, Mac? Like a fag? Good thing we had you with us. That's about outside our first aid experience. I've seen a few like that before. You'd better have a spell before we start now. Well, we'll have a few minutes, Smoko. Better not be too long before we start back, though. Taking the weight off your feet. Might as well. There'll be no picnic bringing that stretcher down. Is that Pukaki over there? That's the head of the lake. Looks a bit different up here. Everything seems a bit different up here. The blokes are not too bad, are they? They're quite all right. Still want to leave? This trip's made a difference. I feel I know them better now. It's Cook over there, isn't it? Yes, that's it. How high is it? Oh, another 3,000 feet. About 12,300 altogether. Do you want to take a let next? Not for a while. That rock climbing on the way up will keep me going in the meantime. It was a bit sticky. Do we have to go back the same way? No, we'll go the long way round. It'll be a bit tough bringing us further down the way we came. They seem about ready to start now. All right, better get a move on. Come on, Harry. Can't stay up here looking at the view all day. feeling now, Mac? A bit sore, but she'll be right. You ever been up a mountain before, Harry? Well, I hardly ever seen one until I came up here. You're doing pretty well, then. Have to take you out with us some weekend, make a climb out of you. I'd like that. You wouldn't have to make it too tough at first, though. It'll be a real hard case New Zealand soon, Harry. You reckon? That's if he doesn't leave first. Well, what do you mean by that? Oh, I thought you didn't like it here. Oh, I found it hard to settle down. Why didn't you like it, Harry? Oh, I'd read about New Zealand, of course, but it's quite another thing to get used to living in a place. Oh, of course, it's a very different country. You lived in London, didn't you? That's right. You certainly went to the other extreme when you came to Pukaki. <laughs> oh, yeah. New Zealand's got some cities, though. Well, I'll come up with the biggest city in New Zealand's only about the size of Nottingham. Well, I didn't quite expect to find London here, you know. Oh, there's a few good towns here. <laughs> yes, I know. It's different at home, though, you know. Boy, I'll say it is. You remember the Hammersmith Palais? Well, I certainly do. If it's so different out here, why did you come? Well, that's why I came, to find something different. And have you? Yes, I have now. New Zealand's a good place if you want plenty of sport and outdoor life. It seems that here, you can do all the things that only comparatively few people can do at home. What do you mean by that? Well, in England, unless you've got a lot of money, you can't go deer stalking, or skiing, or play golf. But all those things that here, you seem to take for granted. I've never played golf. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you could have if you wanted to. Oh, I don't go much in that caper. I'd rather go pictures or something <laughs> like that. Well, that's what I mean. You can do as you like. And have you decided what sort of a life you'd like? Yes, I think so. Well, you look pretty outdoor at the moment. Your whiskers like a melon goat. You bet wouldn't know you now. She'll have to rough it a bit in the public works camp. Well, you want to be bridesmaids. <laughs> You're a bit ahead of yourself, aren't you? <laughs> Sometimes it's pretty lonely for a woman in a public works camp. You need a good type to put up with it. She's a good type. Stripes. Do so you think he's driving a tank? How's the leg, Mac? Won't be sorry when we get there. Cheer up, Mac. We'll bring you a bottle of beer in the hospital. That'll be the day. <laughs> you 
You'd better not let Sister catch you with that. You off duty now? Yes, for an hour. You coming? I think so. See you tomorrow, Mike. Okay. I say, Nurse, what do we call the baby? You'd better call it after Steve. Seems to be his responsibility. week. She's left the hostel now and she's boarding with the family she's met. Not much trouble for Cassie to settle in anywhere. No, she's lucky. When do you have to go back to camp, Harry? Not until Monday. It's what they call a long weekend. Do you mind? I mind leaving you. I don't mean that. Yes, I'm okay now. Do you like Mac? Yes, he's very popular in the ward. He's a good bloke. No joke for him coming down in that stretcher. Doctor said you made a good job of setting his leg. Nice of him. He is nice. So am I. I know. Shall we go to a dance tonight? All right. You don't seem to care much. No, I don't. <laughs> 